So a report just came out 10 minutes ago that the Chicago Bears are fully expected to pick a blue chip wide receiver at pick nine in the 2024 NFL draft. And this is something that I've been advocating for the entire offseason. Even with Keenan Allen, my opinion never changed. The guy is going to be 32 years old. He's on a one year contract. He's coming off of a season where he only played in 13 games. Absolutely, he's a good mentor. He's a good player when on the field. You pair him with DJ Moore. That's about as good of a one-two punch as a rookie quarterback can walk into. But the future matters here. The Bears are not just trying to win now. They're trying to win for the foreseeable future. And that's why you draft a receiver here. What is this draft deep in, guys? Receivers and tackle. The Bears have two young promising tackles, so they're not going to draft a tackle at nine. Are they going to draft an edge? Maybe that could be on the table, but the biggest thing is let's get one of those top tier receivers. How big is the gap between Marvin, Neighbors, and Odunze? It's not that big. I get Marvin seen as a generational talent. I think he's the best player in this entire draft, but Neighbors would be the first receiver off the board in 99% of drafts. And Odunze would be the first receiver off the board in a lot of drafts as well. They just happen to all be in the same draft. So just because you take the third receiver off the board doesn't mean that is worse than just taking the best edge. It's not that simple, especially because the Bears already have a good defense. They've got, of course, on the edge, they got Montez Sweat. They've got the best young secondary in football. They've got two pro, pro bowl linebackers. They do need another edge outside of Sweat. I'll give you that. But Demarcus Walker, he, he was coming off a breakout season the year before he signed with the Bears. So they're hoping that he can get on track. And now he's got a full season, of course, of being in year two of this scheme for Eberflus and with Sweat playing a full season. So I fully do anticipate the Bears to draft a receiver number nine overall. The question is, which one is it going to be? So if we do a mock draft, let's see what happens. Because there actually is a high chance that there's none of these three receivers on the board. So using PFF is one thing, but... Here's how I think the draft's going to go. I think number one is going to be Caleb. I think number two is going to be Drake May. I think number three is going to be Jaden Daniels. I know his pro day wasn't exactly impressive, but the Patriots, why would they not draft a quarterback here? They have the third pick because you have no chance in the NFL without a good quarterback. So I think the Patriots draft Jaden. Number four is going to be Marvin. I think number five, the Chargers are going to trade down to the Vikings, and then that's going to be JJ McCarthy. So now you're left with three teams ahead of the Bears. So Malik Neighbors, let's say he goes six. And then now it's between Joe Alt and Romo Dunze. I think Joe Alt goes seven. The Titans definitely need a left tackle desperately. And then number eight, here's where things get interesting. Do the Falcons take Romo Dunze or do they take Dallas Turner? Or hey, do they end up taking Jared Burst, who is a more powerful guy, of course, up front? We, we really don't know. I just find it hard to believe, and this is just my opinion, that the Falcons draft Odunza here because they brought in Raheem Morris, who's a defensive-minded guy. The Falcons also are desperate at edge. They've got Drake London. They've got Kyle Pitts. They've got B. John Robinson. Are they going to draft another receiver here, or are they going to bolster their pass rush, which just was not good last season, one of the worst in the league? And if the Falcons do decide to go with Dallas Turner here or Jared Verse, well, boom, now Romo Odunze is here at number nine. And the thing with Odunze, he's just a freak athlete. The guy is 6'3", 215. You just look at Odunze's numbers, 15 games played, 13 touchdowns, 140 targets. He caught 92 of them for 1,639 yards. And we know, of course, that Michael Penix Jr. led the entire nation in passing yards. We understand that the offense just loved to push the ball down the field. But this offense, you talk about a bunch of players being in it that are going to be drafted in the NFL in 2024. Odunze is the best of the bunch. He's easily the wide receiver one in the majority of drafts. It just happens to have Marvin and Neighbors in it, which is one of the most insane top three receiver classes we have ever seen. I mean, this is just absurd. But I think the thing with Odunze is he's going to walk into the Bears and he's going to immediately be able to help right away. He's going to be that third target for Caleb Williams, but more importantly, he's going to be there for the future. He's going to learn from Keenan Allen, who's on a one-year deal. I don't anticipate Keenan Allen to be back with the Bears next season. I think he's going to have a great year. Don't get me wrong. He's the one B to DJ Moore's 1A. I mean, these guys are pretty much the same level of receiver at this point, even despite Allen being older. But imagine the level of experience that Odunze is going to gain from being in a locker room with Keenan Allen. Not only that, but he's going to immediately walk in and be a guy that's going to command a bunch of targets. He's going to get a bunch of receptions and he's going to have that home run speed. He's going to be a guy that can beat you over the top. He's going to open up everything underneath for Allen and for DJ Moore. Cole Komet, 
Gerald Everett, all these guys together would make the Bears have one of the most explosive, electric, and dynamic offenses in the NFL. And it's not like they're getting a raw rookie quarterback. I mean, Caleb Williams is coming into the NFL about as ready to go as you possibly can. What he did last season at USC was remarkably impressive. I mean, Caleb goes out there, he throws for 3,633 yards, 30 touchdowns, and just five interceptions. None of those interceptions came in the fourth quarter, which is something that Matt Eberflus at the Combine was speaking about, about how he wants his quarterback in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line to be at his best, and that certainly is Caleb Williams. I mean, he led USC to 7.31 yards per play, which was third nationally, fourth in scoring at 41.8 points per game. The Trojans scored 49 first half points against Stanford, 34 first half points against Colorado, and 42 points through three quarters against Washington. I understand it's the Pac-12. I understand that it's the NFL, what Kale was about to walk into, but how often do we see quarterbacks walk into good situations and thrive? CJ Stroud walked into the Texans. He had good weapons. At full strength, a good offensive line, D'Amico Ryans and the culture. Of course, Bobby Slowick came over from the Niners, so he was working under in that Kyle Shanahan tree, and Stroud balled out. That's not to say that Caleb Williams is going to have a C.J. Stroud type of season, but if anyone in this class at quarterback were to thrive right away, it would be Caleb Williams because he's walking into the best situation. He's walking into an offense that is going to run a lot of different formations. We know Shane Waldron coming over from the Seahawks loves to run 12 personnel, which is why the Seahawks signed Gerald Everett. I had uh, Bears fans asking me all offseason, hey, so Aggie, do you guys think we're going to sign another tight end? And I literally said, uh, I'd have to go back and find a comment. No, but if they do, it will be Gerald Everett. And they did sign Gerald Everett. And not to toot my own horn, but it just makes sense. Gerald Everett, after the ball in his hands, is at his best. And Cole Komet is a top 10 tight end when he's on the field, in my opinion. I've been saying that the entire season. He is very good. So you pair all these weapons together. You now have the exact scheme and system that you've been wanting to run, including with Caleb in it. And we haven't even talked about the other side of the ball. Like the best thing about the Bears is not their offense. <laughs> even with all these weapons, the best thing is their defense. The Bears in the second half of last season were a top five defense. They led the league in takeaways. They got after the quarterback. They made tackles. I mean, just look at the schedule for the Bears down the stretch of the season. They hold the Packers to 17 points. And that's with their offense. The Bears not even scoring a touchdown. Falcons scored 17 points. You score 37, you only give up 17. That's incredibly impressive. The Browns scored 20 points. Joe Flacco had been slinging it. I mean, this guy was a walking 300 plus yard quarterback. Literally only one game did Flacco not throw for 300 plus yards. And, and the Bears picked them off a couple of times. They made it incredibly difficult. They got home, forced pressure. The Lions scored 13. The Lions scored only 13 points. The Vikings scored 10 points. I mean, that is just, Unreal.